Hello everyone, um, it's Julie here. I've decided to do a little video today, so see whether that's successful or not. Um, what I've used for the um, journal I'm going to make for you is um, some very cheap watercolour paper. This pad here cost me £2 and it's got quite a lot of sheets in. And what I'm going to do is um, use a couple of pieces of paper. I've already taken two out. Um, fold it in half. Length, lengthwise uh, both pieces like this and just um, hand rip it to give them um, a nice um, natural effect these two sheets should be enough to make one concertina journal I'll just pop that away right I don't particularly measure or anything like that when I'm going along I just decide on a size, I think that's quite a nice uh, little size, and just concertina and fold it neatly. Then as you go along, what you need to do is just use some Pritt stick glue, and all that on there like that, and just stick the next piece on. And then keep on folding from the size the same when you do your folds and folding obviously the size of your concertina book can be whatever your paper you've got or whatever size you feel you need um, these are ideal little sketchbooks and uh, something you can carry around with you quite easily to sketch uh, lots of scenes on your way. It can be the street you live in, take it away on holidays and um, sketch the coastal front or people. It really is endless. Um, I've had so much fun doing this type of journal. So easy to do. There we go. So that's the start of the journal there. Now keep your front sheet free because what you're going to do is put some card on there. Um, so that you can have a cover and you're also going to do that on the back so it doesn't matter that it doesn't reach the end because you can get your piece of card or card stock to actually cover that right and there you have your concertina journal right um i'm going to show you one that i've already done they're just drying at the moment so Still not quite finished it right this little journal i um i took some photographs of the street where i work and it's a place where i used to live in tutbury in um burton on trent in staffordshire and um i took lots of um photographs um like you would and put them together like a panoramic panoramic view and then just um sketched and used watercolors to paint i think i need to turn it around so you can see so i think everything's upside down and once I'd sketched, um, just used ink, uh, just um, ordinary drawing pens like this. Um, I've not quite finished yet, so um, I might do a little bit of ink around this while you're on there, but simply use your ink to define the picture. And do a few little squiggles in there, make it like a tree, and then um, go around your your buildings. I haven't got the photograph in front of me, so I'll have to do this a little bit from memory. That's my pen there. Now, obviously, that's the roof there. So to make it more like a roof, what I tend to do is do lines 
you can do this by looking at your photograph and take observations but you can see I've done that on quite a few of them and it just gives it a bit of realism but of course what you do is is completely up to you um, I just quite like using ink and pen now the street that I did was um, Georgian Street so most of the windows have got lots of little panes in and some beautiful interesting um, buildings so I'm just going to show you this little bit here how I do it this here at the bottom is um, a shop front so just draw it down a bit so there's a few panes of glass in this and you can see the difference it makes by adding it ink to, to some very rough watercolour painting and sketching um, and adding ink just, just adds the detail. Uh, of course, you know, you don't have to use ink. You can just use paint and the options are endless, really. So that's a little bit, so I've got quite a bit more to add to that, um, but I'll leave that one there. Of course, you've got your front um, concertina pictures, and then you've also got the back to use as well, like that, which is um, fabulous. So you can do it as quick or as slow as you like. Another one that I've had a little fiddle with, and it's been a very quick process it's still drying at the moment is I love gothic revival buildings so I cut out some little bits of gothic architecture out of um, a book that I got from a car boot and um, and then I've used um, a selection of three colours I've used uh, a turquoise purple and um, yellow tones to actually fill in now this is at the very early stages I will be using the ink on top and I think for this one, I'll probably do some splashes on the top. It's not quite dry yet, so um, I'll show you that when it's um, completed, uh, maybe on a, a second video. Okay. Right, well, I'm going to stop for now.